Hey, it's time for another unboxing and today, um, as you can tell from the title of this video, it's going to be a Borealis. This is a new release. <clears throat> Actually, the pre-orders went up about, oh, five, six months ago. I think it got in a little bit earlier than expected. They were thinking December, possibly going into early 2023, like January, I think. But they managed to squeeze them out um, uh, basically at the end of... Uh, near the end of November, so kind of a little bit ahead of schedule. So we get right into it. This is the new Borealis Bull Shark version 2. I guess they had a version 1 before. So this is my first Borealis. Um, their watches have interested me before, but I've never got a chance to, to get one. Um, well, I just didn't buy one. It's not that I didn't necessarily have a chance. But uh, anyways, this, uh, this came in a couple of versions, um, dial configurations, handsets, uh, date and no dates, um, pretty good variety. Uh, I picked the white dial, uh, black bezel version, and it's like a frosted dial, so here we go. This comes in this uh, leatherette kind of case. I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not real leather. Uh, looks like it has a bit of a, this kind of a fabric lining around the bottom, and I guess it goes into the inside. Uh, warranty card cardboard nothing fancy um, it's not like metal like Zellos does or some others um, and here it is and uh, very simple watch case uh, one watch it's just held in with this elastic band here so we're gonna pull this guy out and let's just got this in today it was unexpected I was expecting it this is Friday and I expected it to be in showed originally Monday but somehow they pushed it through so here we go um, pretty nice interesting Let's see I'm just trying to figure this out here a little bit more play here. So, this is supposed to be 38 millimeters, and I got a couple of watches in reference. Uh, I have uh, my NTH Nakin. Um, this is the uh, their subline, but this is the version two. So basically, there's been some refinements to the case, I would say. And and actually, I'm noticing something here on this on this one here. This well, first, uh, yeah. So this one, um, what's on wrist is the version two. This is the full loom dial. Um, loom bezel, obviously a very snowflake, snowflake like design. This is the date version. Um, it's a version without a date, but I opted for something with some practical use. And because of the indexes, and this is color matched to that, you know, they're black, it kind of looks like it. And especially when you, it's when it goes loom uh, in the dark, uh, it looks pretty symmetrical. I mean, you get like a sort of a index here looking thing in the dark you don't see the date but it's it, it kind of matches so you do maintain some symmetry and everything and it's been uh been pretty good i got this on a rubber bee type of strap uh it's not a genuine rubber bee i think those cost like 200 bucks or something like that quite expensive um but it does say that on the inside though so i think somebody whoever copied this <laughs> also copied the name but whatever uh i don't i'm not when we, I wasn't really too concerned about that. I just like the style, the fact that I was looking for a fitted um, rubber strap that looked pretty decent. And I had bought this a while ago, and it's actually for, I believe, my first NTH, uh, which was the uh, one of their limit watch gauge exclusives, um, the uh, Nazario, yes, the one with the California dial, which happens to be, it was a white full loom dial as well. Um, back then, and, but it was on the older case, which did not have the lug guards for one thing. And the, sh the a bit of the way this is shaped is different, and I think these taper a little bit slimmer than they did before. Um, but anyway, that's what I have. This is 40 millimeters. Great watch has a 9015 Miyoda 9015 movement. That's the date version. Uh, coincidentally, sort of, this does too. Uh, Date at the 6th, running on a Miyota 9015. And I will say my first observation right off the bat is that this is very 
very similar to um, the Nakin version 1. It was a uh, big crown. I don't remember exactly like this or not, but uh, it might have been slightly thicker on the on the MTH. Uh, what I was going to say. Um, uh, wish I should remove this. There's definitely a uh, film on here. Let's take that off. So get it. An obstructed view of the dial because you want to want to see this. They have basically a textured kind of like a, I would say it's almost like a Grand Seiko kind of a frost dial, I guess, snowflake dial. Uh, and then they also have this honeycomb design. Um, but I'll get into that in a second. But I was going to say the case is actually very similar to to the NTH one. And in fact, it looks almost like I was saying that there are some uh, differences in the case between this version two and and uh, the previous version. Uh, namely, I could the lugs with the crown guards, and I would say I felt like the this feels slimmer right here, and uh, and also the the way the the lugs kind of curved down and tapered to a little bit of a point it was sh a bit more straight and then rapidly kind of the quick curve down it was a bit sharper and i have to say when i look at this crew quickly it looks fairly similar to the way this looks like um would it be surprising i mean you look at the finish the way the the bevels are on um going along the case size and even on the bottom uh, it's quite similar it tapers very similarly and uh, I should do the measurement this is let's see this should be a lot of batteries I gotta keep this out of the case because a lot of times the, it knocks around and it ends up hitting this very sensitive on button and then I'll just drain the battery and this should be basically that's yeah, basically 40 and if that's the case if I measure across this way this should be 38 one two yeah it's maybe 38 I wonder if it's truly a 38 or is it like more like a 38.5 one two three. I'm getting almost a 39 be honest, am I measuring it correctly? I don't know if you can see, but you know, when I go diagonal from eight to two, right? I think I'm getting looks like a thirty eight point five. Maybe it's a 38, somewhere around there. Uh, so it is smaller. So it's not, it can't be exactly the same case size. Although they do use both 20 millimeter lugs spacing. I wonder what, if the lug to lug is actually, oops, if the lug to lug is actually shorter as well. Or is it the same? I'm getting about. 47 approximately 47 lug to lug that's on the outer not from the spring bars but I'm curious this is 48 it's a millimeter difference in the length and you can kind of see that I don't know if you can but I'm just going to gauging it. I can see that this is a little bit longer lug to lug. Uh, but I have to say uh, right by the lugs sorry if you can see that or not because they're both using 20 millimeters this part of it from the top profile is very similar 
I'm just curious where it just tapers a bit. I didn't measure 40 on this, right? Just double check. Yeah, it's definitely coming in at 40. Yeah. And so here's just a comparison of the two side by side. Let me zoom in actually, sorry about that. And it's kind of hard because this is on a bracelet and this, this one is not, but it does come on a bracelet. And also I notice, I mean, it has female end links, but they don't really go down. I wonder why they did it that way. <laughs> they don't actually, okay, they can kind of go down a bit. You can see there's a bit of motion here. It's not just fit, but I know the NTH has male end links and I, I, it's a bit more up and down. It's a little more, uh, more shapely on, uh, on the uh, NTH, but it does have male end links. And in some ways it comes out about the same as this, even though this has female end links. Um, it's just funny that they made designed it in such a way that it just doesn't really, it just has a little bit of bend down. Just like, I would say from the profile, from what I remember from my NTH, it comes down very uh, similarly. It just kind of goes right out here and then it kind of pushes this link out just right past the end link, or the, sorry, the lug. And so, uh, it, the middle of the links might actually line up with this part, at least on the NTH, I believe it does. Uh, if not the version one, I know for a fact, I was looking at some old videos just uh, last night, just because uh, I feel like the bracelet on this one sticks out just a tiny bit more, like with the, with the way that they did the male end links on, on this guy. Um, it should be the same, but for some reason it looks like it's, it sticks out a little bit more like than I remember it, but... I was looking at the video, but it looks pretty similar. But yeah, I mean, this is a little bit of a shame, though. I mean, why did they bother making female end links um, like that? Well, there is a little bit of play, but to be honest, it's like really pretty insignificant. It doesn't really go down. I don't know. Not sure. I'm sure it'll be fine, but you know, you would expect if it's, they're going to do this, that it can bend all the way through. And I don't know why they make it stop just shy of that. Um, so that's an unusual decision there. You do have a uh, solid end links. You can see no quick release, um, but you do have drill lug holes, as you probably saw earlier. This is a pretty standard affair. This is class is very similar to what you get from the NTH as well, if I'm not mistaken. It's branded here, um, solid, six micro adjusts, which is plenty. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure anyone would, why anyone would really need that many. If you can get most of it from here, it will you know, cut a lot of your sizing down from by links. This is for the fine adjustment. I mean, these are like several, like maybe two links worth or something. Does one's wrist stretch that much? Or maybe the intent is you might actually set it to smallest. And if you actually do diving, that you can extend it all the way out or as far as possible. Um, whatever, however much your, your layers is or something. And you can get this over a dive suit as well or, or something like that. I guess that's what it would be for, not necessarily uh, uh, precising just on wrist without, you know, any other, you know, uh, apparel to consider. Uh, this has a ceramic bezel. It is fully loomed as well. Check out the action. And uh, in some ways, this, sorry, I'm trying to get used to this new camera. So this bezel uh, grip, the way it's textured is similar to, uh, well, they changed that on the V2. This looks kind of more, I would say, Submariner-ish, but it's a bit more thinner. I think the Submariner is a little bit, the scallops are a little bit larger, if I'm not mistaken. But, I mean, it may de depend on the year, but it's, it's not bad. 
uh, but I, I think I did prefer the older uh, way, which actually looks pretty close to these. It looks like they're more squared looking, I guess. Although this does have a bit of an angle or, or bevel on the top edge as well as, I guess, the bottom too. It's not, the old style was more straight. If you can imagine that it didn't have like that angled cut right there. It was more straight out. And it actually, it was rather thin. It's definitely about, I think, half the thickness of this. And it allowed for, still, even at that thin, it, because of the way it was uh, designed, the, uh, it looks like a you know small tooth uh, cog or gear. Um, I was actually pretty easy to grip. Now I'll say that this one I can. I depends on the resistance. I haven't turned tried turning this yet, as you've seen, but um, high polished on the bezel grip area is generally not a good thing for me personally. Since as you can see, my hands generally get to be dry, especially now it's been very cold and I work outside and uh, yeah. It uh, makes it even harder for high polished surfaces, even as even as grip, for me to grip it and turn it. If it was brushed, uh, it just lends itself to being uh, having better traction, uh, as well as I'm not worried about scratches, but um, I'd say I think it would look to me it might look better if it was just brushed. I generally like more brushing than high polish, so we'll just check out the. It's, it's not hard though. It's uh, it's not loosey goosey. Even sound around. Sometimes if you some bezels when you click it around, and you might get that with some Seiko bezels, like the tone of the clicking or you know as you're ratcheting around that uh, that or is that ratcheting sound t can change a little bit. It might get higher or lower depending on which part you're on, and it would change. Um, but this is pretty consistent. Pretty easy to actually maneuver. It just has enough resistance, so it's not to be. Uh, but it's not too resistant. It's like it's just easy enough to to do it. And I went past it by a half click, but I can tell it does line up. And I believe that's lined up. No, that's definitely off. Okay. Try that again. Go around. Sometimes it's the angle that I'm looking at this. Yeah, I would say that's pretty well lined up. And let's take a look at the best, uh, sorry, the dial. That's what, uh, you know, that's uh, part of the design here. Um, yeah, so it's, it's got that texturing. It's kind of like a frost dial. Um, obviously, this this handset and the dial it's very uh, black Tudor Black Bay esque. You know, very typical Samariner style layout with the triangles. But they did put the date at the six, which I think in the way many ways is generally powerful for general symmetry, both uh, at night and as day as as well as night when it's loomed. Uh, you won't have a blank space on this side. Right in the middle, sort of more preferable. You got applied indices. They look up here to be high polished. This should all be BGW9. Let's see if I turn this off. What you can tell there. I mean, I got to turn off the other lights in the room, but um, maybe, maybe I'll do that later. Anyways, <clears throat> well, since I'm here, let's just get the measurements out of the way. I from the case back to the crystal, and it's a bit domed, if you can't tell right now. I am getting approximately 13 millimeters. That's what it looks like to me, about 13 millimeters. Which should be, actually I think the NTH is slightly thinner. They usually advertise it at 12.5. Well, actually it's 11. So, and they have to share the same movement. They're both 300 meter watch uh, water resistant as well. Screw down crown, screw down case back. This has a mermaid in the back. NTH is rather plain. Could be because uh, the the case back on the Borealis might be a tad thicker. 
and definitely the bezel and how high the crystal sits is a bit more. So this is definitely slimmer. This has a pretty, for 38 millimeters, I mean, I, I have to put this back on the bracelet, but from what I remember, this actually, for this, you know, supposedly smaller size too, 40 down to 38, this feels pretty substantial for that, for that uh, size. Um, the weight of it, actually. It's a nice case back, all right. Mermaid. I'll remove the backing later. Well, you know what? Hell, I'll just do it now. Let's put this back. Top piece. I don't know. I keep all this stuff in case I ever sell it. Which uh, we'll see because I had bought put the pre-order on this, you know, again, five, six months ago. Usually that's how the pre-orders are. You take about almost half a year. You put 50% down or you can pay the whole thing off first and then um, pay the rest when it's ready and to, to ship. And that's what happened recently. And, and um, let's see how it's the crown action. Okay, pop. Pretty smooth, except as I guess what I would kind of have expected from Miotas. They can be pretty smooth. Hacks. Uh, so we're going to just advance this. I'll set the time later. I'm just going to be curious if it, oh, is it midnight. Yeah, it's switching over. Okay. Well, at least here it's a couple, just a couple minutes before midnight, which is fine. I think in practice, when you let it go run, the actual date switching might be at a slightly different point as opposed to adv advancing it. But I'll put it at 2 a.m. or so. Let me push the hack. I'm not going to swap the date yet. Move it. I mean, come on, it's just a date this. You know what that's about. So it would be the position between right now hand winding as soon as the the crown pops out and then it's the first I guess it's the first position or that technically the second position and then that would be the date but then I, it's in the red zone I have to clear through here but you know what a date change looks like that just sound pretty good and another B on the assigned B my I mean, Baltic has a B on it as well um, B's and S's are kind of popular for watch brands, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard oyster style bracelet. It's all brushed. <clears throat> Seems fairly typical. Looks like it's 20 down to 18. I believe the Intage is similar. But I was just, I was saying I had bought, pre-ordered this one. I, I wanted a white dial black bezel diver for if you see my channel i've been on this quest for a while i mean my first luxury purchase was a tag hoyer diver it was quartz but it was like this like a white dial uh cementer style um and i had mercedes handset i pretty sure i have a date here at the three uh the dial was submariner style but it was the reverse um like in terms of the rectangles and the circles. Uh, it had rectangles at at those points and circles at the uh, nine and the six, which I, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody else do that. And I never thought about it occurred to me that that was a thing or it's different than what this, you know, is typical here until I was looking back trying to look at old photos of, of my watch before and I just then I noticed, oh, hey, that's, I never noticed that before, uh, but it's been a while since I had it. I had lost that watch, and that's why I've been kind of on a quest to reclaim that feeling that I had from when I had that, that Tag Heuer. Uh, I had that for 12 years, probably one of the longest watches I held, and somehow I lost it at home. Uh, we had moved into a new home, and uh, we're doing some, within the first two weeks or so, we were doing some kind of big projects 
epoxying the floor on the garage, painting the garage walls is one thing, and three things in the garage, and making my custom shelves or cabinets in the... It was going to be a little bit of a man cave in the back part of the of the garage, and at some point, uh, one of those three projects, I, I know I still had my watch, but I took it off, and then I set it down somewhere, and then it didn't occur to me for several weeks, maybe a month or so. I, I don't know why. I wasn't, uh, really, I mean, some reason I just didn't notice uh, the watch was gone. This was in a transitional phase of uh, going into uh, having cell phones as my daily watch and tool and every, do everything type of uh, device, right? And so I was getting kind of phased out of wearing watches at that point for a while um also and so that's why i didn't i didn't notice it i didn't it's not something that ne necessarily would always wear like i do again now these days but anyway so i ordered this to get that feeling because that was I, i not sure but from what i checked online i believe that watch actually measured between 36 and 38 millimeters i believe it was a 37 and so this would be the closest thing to that in terms of its general proportions, I believe, 38. That watch could have been thinner since it was quartz. Uh, I don't think it was 300, probably 200 meter water resistant, but I'd have to check. Um, and so I ordered this and I was waiting. And then this came along, Christopher Ward put out their new C60. And um, yeah, that kind of... And then I, <laughs> and so, and so I, I've been wanting to go back into Christopher Ward for a while, but the, and then when they finally made a white dial version of, in 40 millimeter, that's what I was looking for. Uh, I almost went with that. That was back when they were still had the logo, I think, at the nine, or did they put it at the top, like center justified the, the long Christopher Ward text? Did not mind that either way, really, but um, something about it wasn't. 100% there. Maybe it was the logo. I don't know. But uh, they already had the light catcher case and they just improved it with this recent one. And so they put that logo there instead. And it's not just, uh, used to be, I guess they didn't want to fully commit. They just made it kind of a emboss or is it deboss, you know, a little faint thing into the dial. Uh, it wasn't really colored necessarily before. And the, the Christopher te Ward text was the main thing on here despite that, and then uh, now they've completely removed it, it's just on the back, and then they just have the logo. So that, I definitely like that a lot more myself. Sorry, I'm off camera again. Uh, I'm looking at the watch on, on the side of my device here, and I forget that my hand drops to the bottom, so forgive me for that. I'm trying to, this is a whole new setup I'm doing here in my workspace that I made up, and I'm uh, trying to get used to filming on here without it, <laughs> getting off screen, uh, which it can do from time to time. But anyway, and they also thinned out the case too. So that was good too. It was already pretty nice, but the fact that they managed to get even thinner and this case design is this, I mean, that's why I wanted to come back to it. I actually had a couple of Christopher Wars, but nothing stuck with me. I had a C65, is it a C65 or C63? The Sandstorm, the Warren and Wild Limited Edition kind of field wire sector dial thing. Look back in my videos, you know, I had that one. That was really nice, but for 38 millimeters, uh, oddly, this is 38 too now. Um, that was too much detail in a small space, and I, I went on about it. And there were some other issues I had visually about it that, unless you're in the best lighting condition, that that watch just all that stuff just kind of washes out and disappears. Especially if my eyesight isn't the best, and when I'm at home, unless I'm under bright fluorescent light like I am now most incandescent lighting at home and whatever not the brightest and everything just it just it looks like a very boring watch and i don't want to come home chill and have the watch on wrist and i i'm feeling bored like it's not impressing me because i can't see the details uh unless i put it in a really bright you know situation or bring it really up close to my face and then i can see it but so yeah, anyway, that's why I got rid of that. And I had a, the Sapphire, and that's just when they started to have, I think, this new bezel design, perhaps. I don't know. Anyways, I'm rambling. I know. Sorry. I do that a lot. It's already 30 minutes for an unboxing. And that's that's me, all right? So deal with it. 
Um, anyway, so I have these three now. So I've got this and then, then and teach. I always like the watches. I, I've gone through several, as you see in my videos, primarily either the, the Nakin or the Nazario, the California dial. Um, I do like the snowflake dial uh, design. Uh, that the right indicator is the one I primarily focused on. It has a really nice uh, brush, like ice blue dial that's a uh, fume kind of gradient because it's got stark to the sides. Uh, that was nice. And I, the last one I did, I did a, a mod at the bezel. Um, but when they made this, it's like, oh, white dial, black bezel, and it's a full loom, and it's a snowflake. And it's, you know, yes, and no, it's, I guess you consider this an homage, but this is something that probably, at least for what I can see right now, Tudor is just not likely to do. So, uh, do you, I don't know, will they make a white dial, you know, snowflake? Maybe eventually, I, but then I don't see that they would necessarily make it like this, would they make black applied indexes? Uh, something about that I, I just can't imagine them doing and then if they I mean they didn't they use like like uh, white ones I mean it could work too but I don't know I don't just think they would do a specific configuration like this especially with the date the six I just don't see them moving it from a three or making it a no date um, which I, I could have got this at but I wanted the date um, yeah so then I figure the only way I can decide is if I had them and decide when I had them in the metal. I can't decide by pictures and specs alone. You know, you got to feel for it and see it in real light and and handle it and just see how it is on wrist. And it's hard. They're all have merits. These are both 40 millimeters. Um, this is a full loom dial, bezel, bezel fully loom. Actually, all these are fully loom bezels. Both of these are basically blue loom, I believe. Uh, all BGW9. This one has a green dial loom, but then the, the rest is blue. Uh, 300 meters, 300 meters, 300 meters water resistance stayed at the six. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, this does not have drill lug holes. They all have bracelet options though. Uh, this has crown cars, that one doesn't. Um, this is the only one that's 40, and you want to compare these two together. I mean, you could get a, a Christopher Ward in 38 as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. And I would, thought that would look a little bit too small for this style. I, I, I definitely had a 40 on this, and I like that. It would seem like a sweet spot. Just enough wrist presence, but not too small. I didn't want it to be too dainty. Um, I don't know. I mean, actually, I think this is actually, is it blue or is it green? Oh, I, think, I think this is not the one that works. Yeah, let me just put it up to the light. That should be bright enough. I'm pretty sure it's blue. Yeah, it's blue. Oh, you can't see right now. Turn this off. It's definitely blue. And Boreas, actually all of these have really great loom now. I mean, Christopher Ward's formula, whatever Borealis has always been using, I don't think they've been known to have weak loom. They're usually pretty good. NTH has, I've always been pretty impressed with their loom. Uh, they have a loom crowned here. Um, I don't know, this, these could be a, about the same thickness, although I do feel that the Christopher Award might be a smidge thinner. I think it is. I think it's less than 13 millimeters. Um, this has the most unique design. Um, the other two are more homages, obviously primarily around Tudor styles. Um, they have, both have great bezel action. This one feels probably to me, it does feel kind of nice. This is very smooth. And the clicks, it almost sounds like it's on ball bearings instead of a click spring. You know, it just it has that feel and that sound. And um, yeah, this one has probably the most original design. 
this tapers the most too. I think they, this new bracelet is from 20 down to 16 or 15 or so. Uh, you have a quicker, I like this, the toolless adjust, adjustment uh, for the bracelet. Uh, they're all basically signed to, I don't know. I mean, I have to, can I, can they all coexist? I'm feeling a bit like random Rob here <laughs> on a white dive session, but I had been on this for a long time. Um, I mean, cause I, my started back when, uh, uh, when I had my tag Hoyer back in, I got that in 1990. Five? Yeah, believe so. Oh my god, almost thirty years ago. <laughs> yeah. And if I look back in my past, I mean if I wasn't doing dive watches, that, that was probably one of my first serious dive watches. I was doing more casual or dress watch type of things. A lot of those were actually white dowels as well, if I recall. Um and they were, I think at least two of them were guest watches. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, fashion brands, stuff that you could get at Macy's. But, you know, that's all I knew back then. But they were white. And um, anyways, can they all coexist? I mean, 240s, kind of a Pelagos snowflake dial homage here. This is more vintage, kind of Black Bay-esque. Um, it's supposed to harken back to, like, vintage, like, or even Rolex style or sizes. Um, <clears throat> again, full length dial, uh, crown guards, no crown guards. Um, I don't know. I need to pick one. I mean, logic dictates that though this is the most expensive of the t of these. Um, this also has the most again original and re most refined design. I think. To me, I mean, this or at least for within Christopher War so far, uh, for the C60 um, dive watch series, this I mean, it's pretty much near perfect for for me from them for their dive watch. I mean, I can't imagine the case improving any better. Um, yeah, I know it's supposed to be an unboxing, but I'm going into a comparison because um, I, I need to think this through, but. It, some of you might be going through the same thing, so this might be a good uh, thing for you to hear or, or, or see. <laughs> and uh, I, I, the other action is really good. Um, display case back. None of those two have that. Um, quick release. Yeah. I mean, most likely this would probably be the one. But I do see something in these other ones. Well, actually, to be honest, I did try to cancel this, but I couldn't when when I knew I was gonna probably gonna get this. I said, like, okay, I only want one, and then, but then this came up, and I said, like, all right, I gotta try this too because I was interested in this version before the version two, uh, the original version, and they, they did make it. It's pretty much the same as that. The case is different, I believe, and that's pretty much it. And uh, and I like the snowflake dial. I wanted something that's very kind of Tudor-esque, but it's something that they they won't do. At least again, I don't I don't see them doing anything like this in the near future. So it's it's kind of its own take on it, and that they can get kind of that vibe. And it's kind of a holdover piece until uh, along with some other ones uh, until the Pelagos in thirty nine comes out with a blue dial. Uh, yes, this is not blue, but um, still, if I go Snowflake, I think I'll probably do that tutor whenever that comes out. And it, it will come out. It has to. Um, and then there's this. This just came in. I mean, I ordered it. I couldn't really... Uh, maybe if I wind and bitched enough, I might have been able to get out of my pre-order or just cut my losses and not pay the other half and just say, I just cancel it anyways. But I said, nah. Um, I should give it a try. Let's see how it is on my wrist. Holding it is different than actually seeing it. I mean, this is a pretty perfect size for my wrist size, which is less than 
seven inches in circumference. It's like 6.9. At least that's what I last measured it. I always say 6.9. Unless, uh, you know, I'm picking out certain strap cuts, then they will usually round it up. So I would go up to seven. But yeah, I mean, it goes around the wrist nicely. You know, it's a different feel than the other ones. You know, this one is very, I think, much more high contrast and very, a bit more sporty because it's this is the only one that's printed. Uh, you know, doesn't have applied indexes, and just that stark contrast is pretty cool too. It's a straight white and black for the most part. Um, of course, it's stainless steel, silver, but we're not counting that. Um, so this works pretty nicely, just as this, and it's, it's actually pretty thin, and uh, it's, it's a good running watch too. And this basically has the same movement, so it should be just as good. I, you know, the other 9015, you can't go too wrong. Um, this is a pretty comfortable watch too. I think this is something I would just have to, or just get around to sizing, and then just give it a spin, and just see how it feels like on wrist. And, and, you know, does it make an impact, a real impact for me when I'm wearing it? Like, I look at this, am I like, ooh, you know, there's moments you just love watch, looking at your, your wristwatch just for the heck of it. You're not watching it, the, reading the time. You just want to just see how it looks and it looks good or not on wrist. And does it make you feel a particular way? Um, that's what I got to work out. But, um... Yeah, it's a nice style. I mean, I, I sidestepped quite a far a ways back, but I was going to talk about the dial. The other dial is like a hex or honeycomb style, uh, though they're more elongated. It's not like a real symmetrical hex design. It's more elongated, so it's more wider than it is tall, but nonetheless. And it's it goes throughout the whole dial down. You see it as you look at the website. And they did have one in white. And with snowflake hands, and I forget if it had a date or not. It might, may or may not have been. But the only thing that bugged me was the fact that it only came in with a white ceramic bezel, um, which I don't think it looms unless maybe yes, the pit looms, and then the rest of the the uh, what you see in white here is black. So it's basically the reverse, except for the pit. That still like in the inside that round part. I think it's the only part that glows, not the whole thing. And I don't know, I just thought that was just too much white, white on white. And I already have a, my chronograph is like a white ceramic chronograph, uh, bezel with a white dial-ish. So I don't know, I already kind of have that look, though it's not a diver, but still. Uh, I really wanted a black bezel and I would have looked killer on that. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, did they make that with a snowflake though? Or was it only with a Mercedes handset? I'd have to look on the website. And I'm just thinking they, sh they would have done well to have put... If I feel like they didn't because I keep thinking that they should have used Snowflake on that hex dial. And because, you know, the angles of the Snowflake would probably match the hex pattern on the dial more so than, you know, the more rounded Mercedes handset. At least the hour hand, right? Um, then the snowflake dial with square indexes probably would have been better on that. Although I don't mind the more traditional Submariner style on that. It, it's a little bit of a contrast. But uh, anyway, the main thing was that it had a white on white look. And that was too much white. I really wanted the black bezel on that one. But they didn't make it. And I was thought about buying both of them and just swapping the dials out so that I have this case with the black bezel and I'll have that honeycomb dial and I believe that the rest of it's the same too, snowflake handset and stuff. Uh, and then put this dial into that one and try to sell it off or whatever. <laughs> but I never got around to it. I figured, eh, I don't want to spend that much. I don't know. We'll see how desperate I am to, to try to change it up. But uh, yeah. I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it, sometimes, you know, I mean, I have some watches that are really different, but then sometimes it's good to have some stuff that are classic and basic, uh, dare I say boring, but 
they work. They're well rounded, and they, you know, there's no fuss around uh, whether you know they work with anything else. They just you just put it on. They don't think too much about it, uh, and they always pretty much go with anything that you you sport together. Uh, we'll see. Well, anyways, this is long enough. Forty five minutes plus. So. Um, Thanks for hanging there. If you did watch all the way through, um, you'll probably see more of this uh, in the coming weeks or days. I should size this and get this, uh, give it a test run. Just give a feel for it and so I can at least do a review on it. And then we'll see which one I decide to keep. This, this, or this. Hmm. Anyways, thanks for watching again. Later.